We will call to order the March 2019 City of Columbia Planning Commission meeting. I'd like to welcome all planning commissioners, staff, and guests. At this time, I'd like to ask that everyone turn their cell phones and PDAs to the silent or vibrate mode. The administrator will now proceed with the roll call. Mr. Frost? Here. Mr. Tupper? Here. Ms. Mandel? Here. Mr. Cohn? Here. Mr. Stigmeyer? Here. Mr. Wiggs? Here. And Ms. Hartz? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. A brief review of the meeting format. Applicants with requests before the Planning Commission are allotted a presentation time of 10 minutes. This time should include, but is not limited to, an overview of the project, case history, and any pertinent meetings held regarding the request. This time also includes all persons presenting information on behalf of the applicant, such as attorneys, engineers, and architects. This time limit does not include any questions asked by the Planning Commission or staff regarding requests. Members of the general public are given the opportunity to address their concerns in intervals of two minutes. The administrator has a timer and will make presenters aware of when their time has expired. The Planning Commission reserves the right to amend these procedures on a case-by-case -case basis. The Consent Agenda. The Planning Commission uses the Consent Agenda to approve non-controversial or routine matters by a single motion and vote. <coughs> Examples of such items include approval of site plans, annexations, and street names. If a member of the Planning Commission or general public would like to discuss an item on the consent agenda, that item is removed from the consent agenda and considered during the meeting. The Planning Commission then approves the remaining consent agenda items. The administrator will now read the consent agenda. The consent agenda this evening consists of the approval of the uh, April, or, sorry, Best Board 2019 minutes, <laughs> as well as a number of other items, which uh, two comprehensive plan map amendments and zoning map amendments for uh, penny annexations. Those will be item number two, which is um, annexation of 160 acres uh, near uh, 300 Clemson Road, and the annexation of 120 Sparkleberry uh, Crossing, um, as well as a couple site plan reviews. Um, item number four, 1800 and 1802 Superior Street, um, 1809 through 1821 Wiley, and 1901 through 1917 Wiley, um, for 17-unit residential development, as well as uh, item number five, 1801 Wiley, uh, which is also a request for site plan approval for eight units. And a, you know, item number six, which is a um, site plan review for the 100 block of South William Street, 105, 108, 108 and a half, um, 111 um, South William Street for um, site plan review for 82 units, as well as uh, the east side 100 block of South William Street for an additional 32 uh, units in that particular area. There's also a text amendment for item number eight, which is to re a request to amend the uh, uh, zoning ordinance for wayfinding signage. And item number nine, which is a zoning map amendment for 1517 uh, Greg Street. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, I would like to, I, I will need to recuse myself from item number two on the consent agenda. Please. Okay. Mr. Waits is going to recuse himself from item number two. So we'll have two motions for approval on the consent agenda. One for all items except number two, and then one for number two. Uh, do any commission members or guests today wish to have items on the consent agenda removed and placed on the regular agenda? Okay. I'd like to ask for a motion, first of all, to approve all items but number two on the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? First motion is approved. Now the second one on the, for the consent agenda will be to have item number two, a motion for item number two without Mr. Waits. So moved. I have a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The second motion is approved as well. We will now proceed with the regular agenda. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we move item 11, 2508 Chestnut Street, uh, as the next item reviewed prior to item number 10. Uh, second. We'll have a second. second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. And you want to oppose? We will be moving item number 11 in front of item number 10 for the regular agenda. So it's in the middle of residential. It or is, uh, and the land, land use plan, plan, you can see here, here's okay. Tunach Road. It's actually in what was um, classified from the um, plan that was done about 15, 20 years ago for a commercial area going all the way back to the secondary street. The zoning for this particular area was never um, updated to actually coordinate with the, um, with the land use plan, and so um, the, the residential zoning district actually cuts through the middle of this block. So um, you have a policy document that recommends mixed use commercial residential back to the, the parallel street to two notch and then you have the zoning um, the zoning district that actually uh, runs down the middle of the block. So typically if you saw this zoning map, um, staff would kind of consider this um, commercial encroachment into the residential area. But the land use plan is actually talking about um, creating more of a mixed use type uh, area within that particular block. So, any questions for staff? Um, yes. Can you talk to me about if this zoning was approved, what the buffer would be uh, that is required based on the zoning designation between this C3 and the residential that is next to it? That's adjacent to it, yeah. Uh -huh. um, so it's typically 30 feet. It's typically 30 feet. They can reduce <coughs> that if they build a wall. Um, so if they just do vegetation and they use that buffer of just space and, and vegetation of 30 feet, but there is, as they um, want to get that buffer a little bit smaller, then they have to make more of a, a permanent type fence or wall. And I think it reduces. Okay, is the applicant aware of that? Because, I mean, how wide is that lot? It's a fairly narrow lot, but I believe the ap applicant has talked to the staff and is aware of the requirements if they choose to develop the parcel after it's been rezoned. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Is the, the applicant's not here, correct? I think this is oh. Did, did the applicant have any? Do you have anything you want to say, or? Or you? You don't have to if you don't want to. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> if not, I have specific questions for him that I can't answer. But I mean, I'd, uh, my question was, is the applicant aware of the buffer and the requirements between residential and commercial? And so staff kind of nodded, but maybe the applicant could uh, sure. just Do you want to address that so that I'm... She wants to make sure that you understand there's a... Uh, she wants to make sure you're aware. Or there's a buffer requirement of landscaping between your uh, property and... 30 feet. Right. Uh, yeah, or 15 if they do. Uh, 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 <coughs> uh, hi. Uh, hi. Um, so my question, and I just would like uh, to be assured that you understand that because you are looking at developing property next to a residential that is going to be commercial, commercially zoned, that there's a buffer that's required and that you have to either put plants or a fence, or, I mean a, a wall or something there. Right, and I've spoken with uh, Scott Holder, um, and he's supposed to meet me out there and uh, tell me the exact amount Along with uh, what type, any type of fence that I want to put up. I'm, I'm very familiar with that. 
Okay, that's, that's how, how wide is your lot? Do you know? Excuse me. How wide? The width of the lot? Is anybody? There's no house. The, the lot is vacant. But how wide? How, how, how many feet? How wide? How many feet? It's, uh, Sixty-five feet wide. Thirty-foot buffer. Did you think? Is it thirty? It can be reduced to 15. It can be reduced to 15. Okay. Is it 65 by what? What's the other length? Uh, 139. 65 by, okay. Okay. So 30 feet would seem problematic as a buffer, but it sounds like you have a plan in place to meet with somebody who will help you clarify what you need to do. Yes. Okay. That's, that's Thank my you. question. Thank you. If there's no other questions, can we get a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we um, recommend approval to rezone item number 11 on the agenda, move to item number 10 from General Residential District RG1 to General Commercial District C3. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion's approved. Item number 10 on your agenda this evening uh, was, is, I get back to it, uh, 1616 and 1620 uh, Gervais Street. This is a request to rezone a parcel from um, General Commercial District Design Development, uh, C3 and DD, um, to the uh, General Commercial District C3 and um, DD. And I'll explain this, why it's a little confusing. So. Um, the request for the, that you saw uh, last um, last month was a rezoning for three parcels. There's four parcels along this particular prop, this uh, block. There's this parcel, these two in the middle, and the one on the end. Um, I'm not guessing this. The pointer's not, doesn't like to do. Anyway, I'll try to describe it. The two parcels that are highlighted here um, are the parcels in question. The, the, the request is to add the design development um, overlay district to these parcels. All three parcels currently have the same base zoning district, so all that is being requested tonight is to um, add the design development overlay to these three parcels. The reason for it is the uh, applicant intends to combine all three parcels into one parcel. That would then leave a zoning line running through the middle of the parcel and uh, we do not have allow buildings to uh, a building to cross zoning lines, um, and so the question really had to be uh, whether the DD was extended or the DD was removed from that corner parcel. So uh, essentially, that's that's the request this evening. Um, the applicant is here, and they do have a PowerPoint presentation um, for you. So I will pull that up and then um, turn that over to them to um, present. Unless you have any questions for staff while I'm. Um, doing that at the moment. Any any questions for staff before this presentation? I mean, is this presentation going to make clear you're talking about three parcels versus four versus two? I just want to be very clear about which parcels we're talking about, and it sounds like oh, is sure. this going to? Well, let, let me see if I can clarify it um, through a couple more maps here. That would be great. I I want to be real clear what we're talking about. So um, on this particular map, Gervais Street's on the north side of the um, of the map. Um, Henderson's over here, and this particular parcel is C3 and has the DD. They're interested in developing all of these three par uh, parcel number one, two, and three. Parcel two and three do not have the design development overlay on them, so they're requesting to have those two parcels um, have the design development overlay added to those two parcels. Um, no change would happen to the parcel on the corner. Right, and just for my clarity, parcel four, Four, yes. What, what is the, that currently? That's currently um, a, a automotive uh, business and complete and auto C care. And it's zoned C three. C three. Okay. Um, all right, that's helpful. So that's the um, base zoning map. So C three extends. Uh, and then C1 to the south. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Nope. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. 
Thank you, Commissioner. Can, can you can you please? President. Oh, you did. Okay, I was going <laughs> to ask you to state your name, please. Travis Spencer, Executive Vice President with Trinitas. I'm here with my colleagues, uh, yeah. Mark Perdiconi, as Brad Bennett, as well, and Brad will speak uh, as well a little bit tonight. Thank you for your time and your consideration tonight. What we're asking for is, um, as as staff stated very well, um, a change in the zoning to allow the design overlay district to extend to all three parcels. Um, as stated, it does not extend to two of the parcels at this point in time. And for us to design a building and stay within the zoning, uh, we think it's appropriate to have the consistent zoning over the entire parcel and the design overlay uh, to extend across the parcel as well. Um, a little more, more specific, this is the site as it sits here. And you can see that the <coughs> eastern part of the site is not included. So we're requesting the city um, uh, allow the zoning change and provide a recommendation to council uh, affecting the overlay to extend across this parcel. I'd like Brad to speak a little bit more about what we plan for the parcel. It's early in our design stage because we don't know if we got the overlay or not, um, but I'd like Brad to explain a little bit about what we intend for the parcel. Hi, Brad Bennett with Trinitas. Um, so we heard loud and clear last time we were here that you wanted to have an idea of what we envision for the site. Um, so we have a couple slides just like Travis mentioned, they're very high level at this point in time. Uh, but should give you an idea of kind of what we're, what we're going for here. That this is obviously just the air hill that's existing in the site. Uh, this is a, a preliminary blocking mass, massing plan. Uh, this is the corner of Gervais and Perkins. Uh, it's a 1.3 acre site. We envision a multifamily residential building that would be consistent with the uh, 75-foot height uh, max on this, uh, that the C3 zone uh, has. We envision 225 to 250 uh, apartment units with a mix of studio one, two, and three bedroom units. Uh, to give you an idea of what a building of about 75 feet in height would look like uh, with, within the context of the neighborhood, we put together this aerial uh, here that shows uh, the, our, the building just, that block just brought up uh, to 75 feet in yellow. And then the, the, the dual-branded hotel that's going up across the street on the north end, or I guess in our forefront here on the aerial, is about, we think, about 66-ish feet. Uh, the law school is about 60 feet to the right there. Uh, of course, Senate Plaza is a, is a little under 200 feet. Um, behind the law school, and then just you know, wrapping the context, the heritage condos are about 200 feet to the east of the site. This is another view from Gervais and Pickens looking east. Uh, you can see the law school on the right, the proposed building massed up to about 75 feet, and then the hotel on the left. We also have another view looking north. Uh, from Senate uh, along Pickens Street. You can see the McMaster building in the forefront, the, the proposed building in gray behind it, and then the law school on the left. So, um, as Travis mentioned at the beginning, we respectfully request Planning Commission uh, recommend approval to rezone 1616 and 1620 Bay Street from C3 to C3DD. And we're uh, here to answer any questions you have, and we appreciate the consideration. Is the 75 feet allowed in the C3 DD zoning? Is it allowed outright? Mm -hmm. So um, how it works is it's a step back. So it um, goes at the zero lot line. They can go up to um, 50 feet, and then they have to step back one foot for every three feet back to, um, to 75. So um, the best example is the Hyatt um, under Bay Street in the Vista that actually literally is the perfect scribe of what the ordinance um, um, dictates. So probably the best example. Um, some people will actually just literally step, step the building back a little bit and then go straight up, but they'll still be within that um, step back, step back um, from below. So right. the facade, if it was at, at whatever the step back line would be, would be 50 feet. And then how far back would it? Um, the way it reads, it's um, one for every um, every three feet in height that goes back um, one foot. So it comes out to be about eight plus feet um, uh, of, of that 
step back. So it would go up, then back about eight, and then straight up, or they could literally try to figure out how to design the building to use that triangular space. Um, if you think of Paris, a mansard roof um, would fit into that, that diagram. What other requirements are within that designation, that zoning designation? Of the C3? Uh, of the DD, I mean, in terms of, can you just talk about that a little bit, like sure, the the setbacks design, or? Yeah, the design development overlay district um, is a design overlay district, which um, it comes out of the um, 1998 master plan for downtown. Um, and so we've had the, the, um, the district for about, I guess, probably close to 19 years now, um, getting in close to 20. And um, it talks a lot about the building articulation. So it will talk about the placement of the building on the site. Um, typically, it calls for um, a zero lot line, but it does also talk about the other context on, on the block. And so if the other buildings are farther back, it would actually recommend that the building be back. So it's a little bit context sensitive from the, um, from the placement of the, prop, the building on the actual property. Um, it also will talk about um, ground floor articulation. Um, it requires a certain amount of glazing on the first floor, a little less glazing on the second, third, fourth floors. Um, it goes through um, building materials that are uh, permitted and not permitted. Um, it will um, also talk a lot about um, site development for um, uh, parking lots and um, those types of things too. So. so my understanding is if they did get this zoning change, but they would have to come back for approval for the actual building, is that correct? They or? would. Uh, so under the Design Development Overlay District, site plan review um, occurs um, with um, the DDRC. Um, so typically site plan um, resides with Planning Commission, but um, when the Design Development District was created, um, that um, duty of Planning Commission was merged with DDRC, so an applicant would not have to come to two boards to make it a little bit more streamlined. So they would go through their site plan review and their design review um, at DDRC at the time that they applied. So our role would be to approve or not approve of this zoning change, and then it would go to DDRC for the actual. Correct, so your recommendation this evening goes to city council, they would have a public hearing, they take final action, and then um, from a uh, building design perspective, it would be turned over to DDRC. And at this point, my understanding is that the neighborhood does not oppose the zoning change. That's what they're, they told me that last week as well as what their uh, email from today um, states. Okay. Um, and I would just like to ask the applicant what their understanding of the neighborhood. Um, sure. I mean, you've met with them again, my. <clears throat> yes, Travis Benson, we met with the neighborhood representatives today. Okay. As well. Um, they are concerned about parking <coughs> in the neighborhood and they're concerned about pedestrian traffic in their neighborhood. Um, that's their main two concerns. Um, the bulk and density of this building is allowed by right today, so we're not building, asking for a bigger building. They actually like the fact that we're going through the design review process because that's a much more public process than just building it today. Um, so I, I can't say that we're in agreement with everything. We have work to do with the neighborhood, but we understand their concerns. We're continuing to meet with them. Is that helpful? Yes, thank you. How are you going to handle the parking? So we would handle the parking by, by code, um, which would be some on-site, and then the ability to use some of the off-site street meter spaces as well to make a, meet our parking requirement. Um, we're very comfortable with the parking requirement as it is in the code. We, get, we believe that this, proper, this property and project in proximity to the university and the downtown business district will not require that every single person have a car or that every, per, every apartment have multiple cars. So we're very um, you know, happy to, to meet the... Is parties. the concept of this for young professionals and not another student we, housing? We will be designing it to the 20 to 30 year old. Um, so it will have some students in it. It's located right across the street from the law school. Um, so we will have students, but it's not all four bedroom units geared towards underclassmen. <coughs> we really think it'll be a variety of university and business centric people that want to live in an urban environment. Um, but also want to be close to the university, and we recognize that. Any other questions for the applicant or staff? Does the university, I mean, we haven't heard from them. What they, is they were at their meeting today as well. We uh -huh. met with them as well. Um, I, 
I wouldn't expect that they will make a statement for or against the project, um, but we're having conversations with them about some of the same concerns they have as a neighborhood. I'd like to ask for a motion, please. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, recommend approval to rezone the property from C3 to C3DD. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion's approved. Is there any other business? And I'd like to ask a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? <laughs> <laughs> Meeting's adjourned.